So if you learn enough trigonometry, you're eventually going to come across these three new inverse trigonometric ratios. They simply mean that you're taking what we know as sine, cos, and tan and flipping them upside down. So we know that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Over here we've got the new one which is called cosecant and we short that to cosec theta and that's hypotenuse over opposite. So not opposite over hypotenuse but the inverse of that hypotenuse over opposite. Over here cosine or cos theta that's adjacent over hypotenuse. The new one is secant, or sec theta, and that's hypotenuse over adjacent. And for tangent, we know that that's opposite over adjacent. Well, the new one is cotangent, or cot theta, and that's adjacent over opposite. So they're all just the inverse of what we originally knew as sine, cos, and tan. So the three ratios on the left are very easy to remember. You've probably seen Sokka Toa. You can see we've got SOH here and that is SOH. They're the first letters of each of these words, sine, opposite, and hypotenuse. For ka, we've got C-A-H over here, and toa, so we've got T-O-A. Now over here on the right-hand side, I can't easily create something similar because we've got this repeating C on the first of each of these, the cot and the cosec, but what we can do is we can look at the third letter of each of these, and you're gonna see there's a relationship here. Here for the S, for cosec, you can see it's directly related to the first letter of where it came from. So here, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. When I look at cosec, I look at the third letter and I realize that, okay, it's talking about the inverse of sine because of that third letter there. If I see here, I've got C, then I'm thinking to myself, okay, that comes from cos and the inverse of cos. Well, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So over here, I've got hypotenuse over adjacent. And last of all, I see the T, that's on the third letter once again, so it's going to be related to tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so this is the inverse, it's going to be adjacent over opposite. So let's have a go at using these. So for our first question, we've got use the following triangle to write down the ratios of tan theta and cosec theta. Well, we know that tan theta is toa. We can see our little rule up here. So we're going to be looking for tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So looking at theta here, we can see the opposite side is 3, the adjacent side is 5. So tan theta, to answer the first part of the question, tan theta is simply 3 over 5. Now to get cosec theta, we need to use our new inverse trigonometric ratios. Now I haven't written those ratios down here because I want us to go back to that little trick that we used where we take the third letter of that inverse ratio and that tells us what it's related to. So the third letter is S, so we know it's related to sine. We've got there S for sine, so it's going to be sine theta that we're going to be using, but we're going to be getting the inverse of sine theta. So before we get cosec theta, we need to first use sine theta. So sine theta means opposite over hypotenuse. So I come back to here and I look at theta. The opposite is 3. We don't yet have the hypotenuse right there. So what do we need to find the long side of a right angle triangle? It's going to be Pythagoras. So the first thing we do is we say it's 3 squared plus 5 squared. That's going to give us 34. So we know the length of this distance here is the square root of 34. So I'm going to go and rub this out. And we've got the square root of 34 right here. So we can use that directly now. We know that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so I'm simply going to say that sine theta is 3 over the square root of 34. Therefore, cosec theta, which is the inverse of sine theta, cosec theta, is going to be equal to the square root of 34 over 3, we just flip it upside down. For question 2, it says if cos theta equals 4 over 5, find sec theta and cot theta. Well, looking at sec theta, I can see the third letter is C, so I know that sec theta is the inverse of cos because cos starts with C. So cos theta equals 4 over 5, sec theta is the inverse, so sec theta is simply 5 over 4. So that part's done. We now need to find cot theta. That's the other part of the question. So the third letter is T, so we know we're going to be talking about tan theta. I need to find tan theta, but I can't do that yet because I don't have tan theta over here. So how would I do that? Well, if I draw myself a right angle triangle, I'll place theta here. You can place it anywhere you want, but I'm going to put it here down the bottom right. Now, what we do have is cos theta is 4 over 5. So cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent value is 4. 
So adjacent's four and the hypotenuse was five. I need to find this opposite side here. How would I do that? Well, it's going to be Pythagoras once again. So I say five squared minus four squared, I get the square root of nine and that's going to give me three. So I've now got all my sides. What we need to do is find tan theta first, then we can get cot theta. So tan theta, tan is opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be 3 over 4. Therefore cot theta is simply 4 over 3. For our last question, it says if cot theta equals 0 0.3, then find tan theta. Well, the first thing we need to do is try to find another way of representing this 0 0.3. So I've got cot theta equals, and I want to have this as a fraction. So what I'm going to do is 0 0.3, I know that that's also 3 over 10. So now I can easily make tan, it's the inverse of cot theta. So I'm just going to write tan here, tan theta is the inverse of that, that's 10 over 3. Now if the question had needed me to find another ratio such as sine or cos, then what I could do is rebuild the right angle triangle once again. I'd place theta in one of those angles and then I could use what we have here. We've got tan theta is equal to 10 over 3. That's the opposite over the adjacent. So I'd put 10 here, 3 there. And then I could find the hypotenuse once again using Pythagoras. And once I have that I can find any of the other ratios that I need.